I'm Ted Gall, and I live here in Ojai. I'm a sculptor. I've done that for over 50 years. In Chicago, when I was 14 years old, I got my first job as a uh, delivering artwork out of a graphic studio in Chicago, and it was an animation studio. We would deliver artwork, and then we would come back, and the artist, we, we'd do an illustration, and the artist would correct it, you know, and they'd go over it, and, you know, and they'd tell us how to make it really great. So I went back to school and uh, went back to graphics, and I was doing really uh, contemporary, good contemporary design, very European slick stuff, and did that for a couple of years. I went to the Art Institute of Chicago at nights and uh, did that for about a year and uh, really loved it, you know, and, and I started out just uh, working in clay, doing models, you know, and then I went over and uh, to the metal area and learned how to weld and start, you know, and that, that became uh, really fantastic. So I got my first studio, which was a one-car garage in Chicago, and got a set of welding torches and started sculpting, and, and uh, I gravitated towards figurative things. I mean, that's what I liked. I liked abstract forms, but uh, I wanted to be a little bit more literal. So I worked a lot with anatomy, and when, when I had been at the film studio, one of the guys that I worked with was, was, a, was an old uh, German guy. And he's told me my anatomy stunk. It was really bad. So he gave me a Gray's Medical Dictionary. And he said, you know, study this. And I did. And it turns out that, I mean, he, when I was 25, he was 65, you know. And so when he apprenticed in Germany, he had to work on cadavers and things like that. So he knew what he was talking about. So it was good experience. So then going back to the Art Institute of Chicago, it was uh, we did figure study, but then we did uh, working in the welding area. It was more of a, a practical thing of welding and making it stick and making it work. And then I just pursued it. I loved it and started doing uh, art fairs. I came up with a series of heads. You know, they're small, small pieces and uh, they're very narrative. They tell stories and they just open up, they articulate. They're kind of great. So if I had done this in steel, it would have been one. Okay, so I, I learned to do it in wax, and I and I and I developed a head that could be used for other pieces too. So now I design. I just learned to design all the other shapes, and I would rebuild a piece each time. So it's not often you're looking to see a number one of five hundred. These are one one of one. You know, I never you know I'm changing each one. You know, nothing is the, exactly the same thing again. And so this is just a process I've learned since I've lived out in California. And I've worked with one gallery for 30 years, and they've done things for me that are 15 feet tall or do pieces this size, you know, and they're, very, and they're great. You know, the detail is outstanding, and they do a good job. I've been a filmmaker. I always thought that there was a way to put films inside my pieces. I met a young guy. And uh, I came up with a, an idea to, to develop a computer that would fit on the inside of one of these small pieces. My son, who is now uh, in his 30s, but when he was younger, he and his friends, I would give them the project and I would give them a storyboard and they'd turn it into a small clip that put it on a flash drive. And I'd stick the flash drive in a little computer that went on the inside of the sculpture and uh, then I'd have a video on it. So that on the back of this piece, it's got typography, which goes back to my graphics. And yet on machinery, they always have some kind of serial numbers or things like that. And they have buttons and things. So this was, it's about questions. And it's about this man changing from his image to another image. It's got an on button. So the computer is inside. I push it, it turns it on, shows it that it's got a full charge and there's it diminishes these lights go down okay. in charge. Okay, so this this is a piece, and it's and it's uh, it's called an image factory, and it's based on a movie that was done in the 30s, and it was a black and white film, and uh, it it was about the perfect society, and it was done in Germany. Okay, and so what I'm saying here is that this is this is this is the facade of an image factory and it shows all these different faces and it really shows what the sculpture is about. It's about a man, this man, that wants to change and all these different faces indicate something other than 
physical, it might be a, some part of his personality. It may be make him more loving, more caring, more intelligent, you know, anything. So, so that's what it's talking about here. So it's an image factory and, and it invites you in to look at what they have to sell. And these very small people, this is one of the things that I came up with when I was working at this moment, is to try to show monumental size. So this takes you away from reality. If you look at the tiny little figures, it's as big as the Statue of Liberty. You know, okay, so that's an idea too. Okay, so now they, they open, they're articulated. So now we're gonna go into the factory. But first of all, this is the guy that thought about changing. He wanted it changed. And this is the place that he's gonna go now. And you see the screen just came on. So it's the screen is opening up and it's showing them what's happening within the factory. And it's showing how they've got all these perfect images. And, you know, it shows mechanical things pumping, there's sound in it. And at one point, your picture will be in it because this is a camera. So it'll take a picture of you. They did is they took this one particular woman who was very beautiful and had a wonderful personality, and they tried to clone her. And in doing that, they ruined her. You know, and she became maniacal. So that's what the whole story is about, how the, their failure to, you know, to do that. Oh, and this has got a little magnet in here so that you do that and it turns the film off. And, okay. So this one is called The Da Vinci Fantasy. And it's about Leonardo da Vinci when he came up with the concept of flying. And, you know, all artists, he had a dry period. And, uh, you know, many people do different things to juice themselves up. And in this case, Leonardo put a beak on, like he was a bird, you know, a little beak. And he, and he put some wings on his back, you know. So it gave him a feeling. It's the same thing uh, on the small ones. I have the same computer. It fits on the inside. And I, because of the experience in this factory, all experiences work for you, you know, so working in a factory for 20 years, having a studio there, you learn all sorts of mechanical things and engineering and things like that. So this is a hold access plate, the whole thing comes off in case you gotta worry, work on the computer. And there's holes around here that are hidden because there's big speakers on the inside. And so the sound comes out and it actually reverberates, you know, because it's really a nice little computer system. This is Da Vinci and we open this up Here's a video. And this is a video I did about Da Vinci divining, designing, and it's called Through the Eye of Da Vinci. So there's always this eye. And it went on to Florence and showed Florence about that period. And then it starts to show birds. And you, you equate the drawing against the wings, the, you know, the muscles of the birds and things like that, and humans. It's all about his life. And then it talks about mythology of Icarus, people with wings, people flying. Gets into Kitty Hawk, the history of flight. And as it, this is like one interesting thing, this bird image and then that's Da Vinci's face in it. So it's kind of some interesting techniques and things, phase that we did. And again, old drawings. And it's almost like these people came upon an outdoor theater. Remember how we used to go to outdoor theaters? So there's a theater now. Here it's showing clips of failed art projects, you know, flying projects where little wings didn't quite work or get them off the ground. And it goes more, it goes back into Kitty Hawk again. The whole concept is flight and how it advances through the years. And there's Da Vinci again and through the eye of Da Vinci. I try to keep that same thread going all the time and the birds flying through his eye. And then it, it, as, as technology progressed, the planes became different, became more contemporary, shows the old design, shows newer designs and how they work. It finally ends up with a rocket taking off at Cape Canaveral and then going back to the skies and to the eye. And, and in the eye, there's a star constellation of Pleiades, you know, which is kind of, kind of nice, kind of interesting. And I, I, I got my sepia tones in it. There's people hang gliding. I get nice sepia tones and it goes with the patina of the piece. And people walking on these branches, it is a birdhouse. 
and walking on the branches with baggage and broken wings. They go into this very religious looking place at the cathedral and they go in and their, their issues are immediately taken away from them. And this one also opens and inside you see the people without any of the images anymore. I mean, any of the baggage or broken wings or stuff like that. And since it's a bird house and there's wings on it, so I kind of carry that through and that work. Translated them into different materials completely. I mean, bronze, old I-beams, things like that. You know, developing petroglyphs out of uh, paint pens. Uh, and these are these are stories. And this particular story is about the blue coyote. And he was a very vain, very vain coyote. He was very beautiful. It's bright, beautiful colors. And uh, he, he always would look at himself. And he was walking along the edge of a, a riverbed one day, and he tripped and fell in the mud. And 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 that's why to this day coyotes are always kind of a dirty, dirty gray, you know. But this showed him in his beauty when he was beautiful, and and he's walking along with a mirror out in front of him, seemingly because he is looking at himself all the time. So it was something about vanity. And these are other pieces that were that were uh, you know significant to the Hopi period, you know, the Zunis, you know talked about the bear clan going west and they were looking for rain all the time and you know coming up with different images of rain where there was pierced things with little nails running through and little turquoise beads and supposedly indicating you know water dripping down and, uh, again the bear traveling west only this time he's impersonating himself as a deer so he wouldn't scare people and carrying his own rain cloud with him you know, so they have beautiful designs, you know, it, 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 but I just tried and I contemporized them. You know, I just changed them. Uh, old series. This again was a head. This was all out of welded steel, but it was a gasket hat. And this sat in the conference room and these were come to some of the gasket shapes. And um, you can't even see the, the, the little fish things that are floating up there. They were made out of all punching from gaskets, and I put them together and make fish out of them. This is a particular project that I started back about a year ago. This piece was done maybe six years ago, seven years ago. A former client saw it and said, you know, I think I'd really like to have that piece, but I want it large. He said, I want a figure that's nine feet tall. You know, and I, and, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't really want to get that involved in a big piece at that time. But he pushed, and I said, okay, well, I went out to the house to see where it was going to go, and it was in Brentwood. It was a gigantic house, and it had an atrium in it that, that was a shaft that went from the first floor all the way up through the roof, you know, and, and it had an enclosure, a glass enclosure, and I said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, you know, because it needed more than a six foot, so I was going to do it nine feet tall, and this was the image that, that we were looking at. And it's, uh, it's based on collections that I have of masks. And this was a particular mask that I collected from Guatemala. And, and people wore it. It was that size. And it would be strapped to their shoulders. And here it's kind of a fish thing, you know, and it walk with it. Okay, so I, th there was a water element within the space. And I thought that I would try to capture that with this. He loved the idea of it. And... Um, said, well, let's go for it, you know, and then I wanted to go a step beyond because the significance of the figure here now, now I've changed it. I've gone away from just a mask that I found in Guatemala. I've now got a puppet that was created by somebody and it was created by me and this is my hand and he's escaping me. He's running away from me. And whether it's uh, somebody in your family or it's something, when you sell an object, it escapes you, you know, it runs away. And uh, so that was the story that I had here. And this shows an escaping puppet. And I wanted to go a bit farther because within this atrium that was 25, 30 feet tall, there was now the possibility of another element. And that was to bring in another hand that would be floating from up above. And the strings would now be coming down to the hand, you know. So it would have been outstanding, would have been... A, but he decided that they didn't want to do it. But this was all within the planning. So this is a story of how I had a piece from 
a trip that I made to Guatemala, Guatemala 30 years ago, and it laid there in my mind all this while, and then all of a sudden I came up with this idea to tie it in with a figure that I had created, and this was me, and it was escaping from me, it was running away, and then years later, it, it came back again so I could reinvent it. So going from, this is a piece that the anatomy is good, everything works on it, you know, but now I've looked at it for a period and I find things that I didn't like. So I went ahead and created a new one. Okay, so this was a wax and it doesn't look much different, but it really is. The head is cocked different. All the muscles are bigger. You know, the forms and the legs, I've lengthened the body a bit. You know, it just, it just changed. All these sticks are just there to support it so it doesn't melt or fall down. So it, I changed the angle, you know, he's pushing. So you can go back and reinvent somebody. You know, you can redo it. You can do a little bit more and kind of make it work for you. And this is when I came in thinking that the possibility of using the other hand, you know, we were looking at it and, and uh, I said, well, you know, we can capture... I had a whole air shaft that was going up 25 feet, you know, and I'd have another hand floating up above it. And they would be just as if they were tied around his finger, you know, and coming down. So. You can see that these people are walking in on these branches, and they're going into this wonderful house, a place that solves their problems. And then when they leave, they walk away with no baggage. So you can see these figures are now freer and more happy and uh, another thing that's changed in the past uh three or four years is i is for years i did patinas that were done with different acids and and i've decided that that's not healthy for me so now that when i do patinas now they're painted out and i can replicate things that i was happy with before that that I had to do with acids, but you know, which maybe wasn't very good for me, but now I can do with paint. And they're just as permanent and probably better.